Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to my series I'm doing on building this big bandsaw mill. If this is your first time here, there'll be a link in the description and up in the cards to a playlist that contains all the videos that bring you up to where we are right now. Last time we installed the lifting rods and today I'm gonna get started on the blade guides. This video is sponsored by Wrangler Riggs Workwear. I'm currently wearing the Riggs jeans, the flannel lined work shirt and the Ranger jacket and I've been wearing the Riggs products for the last few weeks as I've been out here working on the sawmill. Later on in this video, I'll be sharing some of my thoughts on the workwear and how it's been performing out here over the last few weeks. But for now, let's get started on these blade guides. So in a previous video, you saw me install a linear rail on the underside of the beam, and that's gonna control, or at least make the motion in and out relatively smooth and stable. And it's also going to support the weight of this blade guide as it's hanging out here, kind of cantilevered off of the support bar which is gonna be over here. So this structure is pretty simple. It's just two pieces of tube nested together so that the inside tube can slide in and out to set the distance you want the guide away from the work. The other thing I'm doing here is turn the tube about 45 degrees so it's more of a diamond shape. And that's more for future proofing more than anything. Right now I'm just gonna do a really simple system of holding this thing in position. I'm going to just drill some holes into the outside tube so I can lock this inside tube down with some bolts but in the future, I might want to automate this. So in that case, I'll want the inside tube just to be running on some V wheels. So having it up like this allows you to have some V wheels controlling the motion as the thing comes in and out instead of sliding through a bigger piece of tube. So I'm gonna get started with the easy thing. I'm gonna make the mounting plates for the linear carriages, and then I'll move on to the outside tube for the side to side motion thing. I gotta think of better names for these things. <laughs> So for these linear carriages, I'm actually going to take advantage of the threads in the carriages themselves this time because I need to be able to bolt the carriages to the mounting plate from the outside. So I actually went out and got metric bolts. I think this is the very first time I've ever bought metric bolts before. These are uh, M12 bolts and I had to get them out of the specialty bin at the hardware store. <laughs> So now I'm going to move on to the outside tubes for the side-to-side -side adjust and all these things needed for some prep work are some holes drilled for some locking bolts. So anywhere on the mill that I have bolts that need to be frequently loosened and tightened to operate the mill, I'm going to be using 5 16 inch bolts or half inch bolts on those since those bolts have heads that are either a half inch or three quarters of an inch, which match the size on my chainsaw tool. So next I wanna start mocking things up and getting things in the right position. I still need to figure out the length of the posts that are gonna come down off the linear carriages and off the beam to support the sliding mechanism. And the easiest way for me to know where that blade guide needs to end up exactly is to put a blade on here. The calculated or theoretical length of the blade should have been 25 foot two inches and I went with a little bit of a longer blade just in case uh, that math wasn't quite right. I prefer a longer blade and have a little bit of blade length that's not being utilized over not having enough cut width. So these are 25 foot eight inches long, inch and a half wide blades. <laughs> All right, let's see. Here we go. <laughs> Sweet. And I'll just coil up four of these things so they're easier to store. Uh, 
There. I hope this fits. This looks a little short. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. short so I still have some room over here on the idle side for this thing to come over a little bit further all I have to do is notch this around the nut holder for the raise and lower mechanism and that should give me uh, the couple inches I need to get this thing fitting but I just want to I'll take this tape off now so I can get a really good idea of exactly how much space I need So here you can see I have the idle mount here and it's contacting the nut holder. So all I'm going to do is just notch the, um, the idle mount a little bit just to give me some clearance for the nut holder block to slide into it. And that should get it over about an inch, which should allow me to get the blade on there. Uh. Woo! Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Got another inch of travel, so that's two inches less on the band. Oh, I can't wait for these logs to be out of here. All right, it's still a little tight, so I'll probably have to take off a little more material. Actually, it looks like I can take off a little bit of the nut block but I really don't feel like taking that off. So I have this in pretty much the right position here. There's still some back and forth motion, but I just want to set the height for now. So what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna have to weld this piece of uh, tube up on the backside of the mounting plate so that when it comes down, it's actually contacting back here in the, uh, or on the blade guide. If I just mount it in the middle, the tube would come down and hit the, uh, the adjuster bolts. So that's one of the things I wanted to check for at this point. So I can take a measurement for that post length, 12 and a half inches. And the blade guide does have some up and down motion, so I'm not too worried about that. I think it has, oh, it's got about an inch in either direction of travel. So I should be good there. So next I'll cut the post and weld it up onto a plate. And then I'll continue trying to fit this thing up and getting it all perfect. I'm gonna grind this paint off of here and then I'll mark the actual location for that. Ugh. It's heavy. Why is everything on this project so heavy? So I was thinking about welding like a receiving tube at the bottom of this post. That way I could plug weld this um, blade guide into that receiver. And if I ever need to remove it, I can drill out the plugs and still have this piece and can reuse it. I don't have anything I can use on hand right now for that. And looking at the piece here, all this is is a piece of this stock here, two by two by quarter wall, with four holes drilled in it for these adjuster bolts and a small plate weld to the front. So if I ever need to replace this, all I have to do is fabricate a new back assembly, which would be pretty easy. Oh, that is cool. So the linear rail isn't quite locked down yet because I still need to align the second piece to the first piece, so they're pretty loose right now. But it slides quite nicely. <laughs> oh, it's cool. This is exciting. All right, now I can work on the outside post thing. So I have the post clamped to the beam and I tacked on the I guess the holder tube. And what I'm gonna to try to do now is get these things aligned. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do actually is figure out where I wanna weld this uh, adjuster bar onto the guide bearing. And then I can run the guide bearing back and forth to align both of these two pieces so that it's angled 
in this direction the right way and in this direction the right way and then I can weld the post in place and finish welding this bracket thing in place. All right, I decided to use the full length bar so that I could really see exactly how this thing was getting aligned. I can tell it needs to come in somewhere like this to be in the right alignment. So I'll mess with this until I get it aligned and then I'll tack it onto the blade guide. So what I think I'm going to do is actually shim the post back by about a quarter inch by welding this plate on, on the back of the beam and then the post will get welded to this. There is clearance here between the the rod and the, uh, the tube. So that's not, that wasn't too big of a concern. But my bigger concern is up here where the um, adjustment post actually reaches the guide bearing. It's pretty close to this adjuster bolt. It will still work this way, but I prefer to be a little bit further back, more in line with the post. So if I come back a quarter inch, there'll be, there'll be a little bit more room there for me to work and actually get this locking nut down. <laughs> That's cool. That's so cool. Right, that post is going to go up a bit. Let's just tack it and go. So now I pretty much just have to do exactly the same thing on the other side for the other blade guide. But let me just take a moment to tell you about the rigs and workwear that I've been wearing for the last few weeks and my thoughts on them overall. So overall, I've been really happy with these. Everything's been working out really well. Everything's really comfortable, plenty of room to move. I really like the Ranger pants with the added pockets. I've been kind of changing the way I worked a little bit the last few weeks because I never really have pants with a lot of pockets in them. So I've been trying to utilize those more and more and having stuff right on hand or on leg in this case is really handy. And once I got in the habit of actually putting things back into the pockets when I was done with them, I found that I was looking for things a lot less. One of the things I wanted to test with the jacket was its durability out here when I was working with um, like welding and grinding specifically. So with grinding, I had the grinder shooting sparks directly at the jacket to see if that would affect it at all, and it didn't. I didn't have any problems with the sparks melting the material at all or anything like that. I did do some welding in the jacket to see how it would hold up to welding, and it held up a lot better than I thought it would. I did get a few burns from the splatter as it hit, came back and hit the jacket, but I think that's pretty typical of anything you'd be wearing. Even my welding jacket does that. Now besides just the aesthetics of this jacket, it's also really nice because it's fairly light and it's not bulky, but it's still really warm. So it makes actually working in this quite easy. I really like the material on the work shirts. I wasn't able to damage them at all, so they are quite durable and tough, but they are still quite soft to the touch. Now the work shirts themselves, they're not really my style, so I don't know how often I'm gonna wear them, except this one here, the flannel line work shirt. It's so warm, <laughs> I'm gonna keep wearing it, especially as the temperatures keep dropping here in Minnesota. <laughs> so one last thing, there is a giveaway. That's gonna be for your choice of one shirt and one pair of pants, and that's open to residents of the continental United States. All you have to do is leave a comment down below. Just include the hashtag Rango Rigs to be entered into the drawing. I'll pick a winner in a few weeks, and then you can pick your shirt and your pants. So, let's make some more blade guides. Things. Guide things. <laughs> so typically on a bandsaw mill, the guides on the drive side are fixed in place and don't adjust in or out. But since I want to have some um, flexibility in the future for my own clamping options and width of cut and all that stuff, I'm going to make the drive side adjustable just like it is on the idle side. That way in the future when I change the way I'm clamping my logs to the bed, or if I want to make a wider cut, I still have that flexibility to do that just by adjusting the guides.
So it's really starting to come together now. I don't have a whole lot left to do. The next thing we start working on are the blade guards and the belt guards to get those things enclosed, uh, both protected from the elements and uh, protect me from them. <laughs> So a big thank you again to Wrangler Rigs Workwear for sponsoring this video. Be sure to enter the giveaway if you're eligible and make sure you check out their full range of workwear products. There'll be a link to that down in the description below. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. Must be a popular day for airplanes. Oh well, this is too much fun. Whee! She's back. Here we go.